Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at post processing specifically for horror games in Unity 6 in the URP. I am using the Finwood Studios asset pack, which I'll put down in the description if you want to check it out. So, the whole idea of this video is to go from just this with no post processing at all. Once we enable the volume that I'm going to use, you can see that we get a much more atmospheric, much more dull add greens and blues and things like that to the shadows and the highlights and you can make a much much grungier feel as you move around in your scene within the game so i will add this post processing volume to my patreon so you can get hold of that if you're interested in looking at how this was set up and when you're in URP, you don't need to import anything at all in this case i'm just going to create an empty game object which is going to act as my post processing volume so i'll just call this volume and we'll add a component called volume and this is a way to start adding in you can see that there's a mode set to global you can set this to local and i do have a full video on showing you if you moved into another area you can set different post processing how they did in one of the resident evil 2 remake that when you walked into a corridor it become much blue and darker and it's a great way to differ your effects but if we keep this on global leave the weight on one and you can just click new to add a new post processing volume and i'm just going to call that my tutorial post processing you can see that it's named there and we can begin by adding lighting effects or post processing specific effects for this one thing i will mention is on your camera you need to make sure on your rendering drop down you do make sure that post processing is ticked because if you don't you won't actually see anything Another great point to mention is you want to find your URP asset and your URP renderer, which you'll find in edit project settings and graphics. You can see that it does let you add rendering features and that this is where you need to add screen space, ambient occlusion, because it's not available in the post processing list. So you need to make sure that you add that option and add the screen space, ambient occlusion in that list. And if you watch on the edge of here, it just adds darkened areas to recessed areas which meet other objects just to add that element of realism if you go back to your volume up in the hierarchy and i want to start by adding a new override we can click to add that and the first one i like to add is called tone mapping and we can tick the little box here and when you add tone mapping here it doesn't do anything and it's got two options neutral or aces it's used with HDR lighting and PBR objects like you would see in popular films and TV because it's a group of effects that has been widely used across industry. So it's a great way to start and you can move from there. Good one to use is called color adjustments. And this is a great way to add a bit of uplift to your scene because if you see in my scene here now, it looks, it may be too dark for you or maybe too dark in different areas. So if we move between the levels in here, it might be a little bit dark from what we're looking for. So with color adjustments added, we can adjust the post exposure. So we can just lift that to about one. Just we can mess around with this as we go. You can up the contrast slightly. As you can see, if we up the contrast, it does darken, really make it look feel more grungy. You can just lower the saturation slightly because anything that I think is too colorful can make it almost feel a little bit too easy and enjoyable so if you just remove the saturation a little bit it can go a long way another great one to use if you add another one is called vignette and vignette is a really powerful one where i can select the color and as you can see if i increase the intensity it affects the edges of the screen it makes it feel a little bit more like tunnel vision so you can imagine this to make it feel more scary and more closed in and of course you can animate any of these effects so you can do this when there might be a tense moment. You can add one called shadow midtones and highlights. And this can allow you to add specific colors to different areas, whether it's the actual shadows, whether it is actually the midtones or the highlights. So if I just enable this for the shadows, you can see that when I change this, it will make this look slightly more green now, as you can see around the edges of this desk. If I make it more towards red, you can see that we can get that color. Or we can just add just just a hint of that color to make it feel a little bit more murky rather than just very central you can select midtones and you can do a similar thing so you can bring out colors in there i might just shift that slightly to blue and you can go and start adding a little bit more depth to your scene as i disable and enable some of these effects another great one to highlight specific lights and to make it almost feel exaggerated and more ghost-like is you can go to the post-processing 
and add bloom. And you can make sure you enable threshold and intensity. And as I increase the intensity, you can see the highlights become more blown out. And as I decrease the threshold, we get much bigger highlighted areas that can make it look more distorted. What you can do with Bloom is add a dirt texture. So you can add any image here. I've just got a grungy sort of texture, which I got from the internet. You can find better ones than this. And if I increase the intensity, you could see how it affects things on the screen. And when I move the camera around, you get just a look of smearing or dirt and grime that would be on the actual camera lens. Another effect which is often used is something called a film grain. This can simulate a sort of retro horror vibe or VHS and you can enable the type so you can have say thin and you can adjust the intensity. Now if I walk around the scene here as if I was playing this normally, you can see I've got some large particles with high intensity and you can see how it sort of grains the entirety of the screen if you were looking at maybe a camera or something that's really low light what your eyes would do. You can even remove the response to make this sort of effect look bigger. But again, I would keep this one at a fairly low value if you want to add it. Another popular one is chromatic aberration, which simulates the very edges of, say, like a camera lens. Best to see this in the game view. And as you can see, when I adjust that, it sort of distorts the picture. And you can see the red, green and blue, which splits out the image. But again, you can add this and keep it to a low value. So one that I quite like where you can split the shadows from the highlights is if you use something called split toning, where you can have shadows, highlights, and look at the balance. And with shadows, you can actually give them, say, more of a, a colder tint. So you can see it like this. And then if you take the highlights and you make them a little bit warmer, so we'll take just a warmer style red. You can adjust the balance between how much these should add to each other, but I'd say keep that very central. And you can just start adding a slight bit more depth to the scene, depending on what you want to create. And of course, you can adjust various different colors and settings depending on what you want to create. So if you want to create something more ghost or haunted, you can go blues or greens. Something sci-fi, you can go very cold and sort of very neon -y bloom. If you want to go psychological, you could really take down the contrast and the exposure and make it feel really pale and dull. And of course, with any of these effects, you could animate any of these if you have a really intense moment in your game and adjust the chromatic aberration, adjust the vignette to make it look like your vision's really tunneled. But as you start adding these to your scene, you can add a lot more darkness and mystery to areas and make it feel a lot more closed in and dingy depending on what you're going for in your own style game. Now, I hope this helped you out. Let me know down below if you've got any questions or any confusions, and I'll be sure to answer them. Be sure to check out my Patreon to get over 225 different scripts, assets, and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And also check out Unity's massive sale that's now on, because you'll save massive amounts. Big thank you to all my patrons, special thank you to Verishutha and Party of Ten for their amazing support, and thank you to everybody else who comes to watch the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.